This is International Master Eric Kislik, and now we're going to answer the question, who was the greatest player of all time in chess? It's a very difficult question to answer, and unfortunately most people have not really looked into it the right way, and actually we're very fortunate that there's this website, Chess Metrics, that ranks players from the past based on what their rating would have been if there was a correct ELO system in place. So. I'll leave you a minute to try to guess who do you think had the best one-year performance in all of chess? Do you think it was Kasparov, Botvinnik, Karpov? Who do you think it was? Well, the correct answer is Bobby Fischer with performance of 2881 in January 1972 through December 1972. And, uh, but as we can see here, Kasparov was very close behind with a yearly performance of 2879 in 1990 throughout the whole year. So that was a tremendous year for Gary Kasparov as well. And uh, the third best performance was uh, from Mikhail Botvinnik with 2871, that was January 1946 through December 1946. But the interesting thing here is, if we add Magnus Carlsen to the list, his performance throughout to the year 2014 goes in right here at 2875. So for the best single year performance, we have Bobby Fischer at number one, Gary Kasparov at number two, and Magnus Carlsen at number three. But gets a little bit more tricky once you extend the time period and make it about longevity rather than just one year. Unfortunately, Fisher stopped right at his prime. So this year, 1972, he was completely dominant and afterwards we didn't get to see much of his chess until the 1992 match. So if we go to two-year peak, here we have uh, Gary Kasparov at 2877 with 1989 and 1990 as his two strongest years in a row. And uh, then we have Fisher one point behind at 2876. That was uh, 1971 through 1972. And then Lasker comes in third, <laughs> featuring the year 1894 through uh, 1895. But um, if we add Magnus Carlsen to the list, he would go at number three, just two points behind Bobby Fischer at 2874. So the interesting thing here is that uh, things change as we add a little bit more time. So if we go to three-year peak, we can already see Gary Kasparov 2874, Bobby Fischer 2867, and if we go to uh, four-year peak, we have much more of a stretch here. We have 2875 for Kasparov, and uh, that's 1990 through 1993. And then we have Lasker at number two, Capablanca at number three, and Fisher at number four. But once again, for the four-year peak, number two would be Magnus Carlsen right after Gary Kasparov. So. If we look at uh, five year, Kasparov stays the same. And then when we go to 10 year. So the interesting thing about this list is that while we can agree about, uh, well, I guess maybe not all of us will agree, but uh, apparently Fisher had the most dominant year in chess that one particular year. But um, when we look at, let's say 10 years, what, what very well may happen if, uh, you know, if, if Carlson's able to, uh, to have a, a really, really strong career over the next 10 years, this, this could certainly change, but a rating of 2863 over 10 years is really, really dominant. And that's 1986 through 1995. So I think a 10-year range often describes a player's peak period in chess. So from this angle, if we're talking about just sheer longevity, quality of play over a long period. And during this period, Kasparov was world champion the entire time. So 
from this angle, it seems it seems fair to say that relative to the competition, Kasparov was the strongest over this period. But then again, if we're talking about uh, the single best year, I have to give it to Bobby Fischer. And it's just an unknown and an unknowable since he didn't have more, more games after that besides the 92 match. So that is uh, certainly unknown. But if we're talking about IPRs, intrinsic performance rating, which is a term that uh, was put together by a, uh, a PhD in computer science who did, did numerous calculations on uh, quality of play. The overall strongest world champion is Magnus Carlsen in terms of overall quality of play. So what's very interesting is that in the end, we can say that the best year can belong to Fisher. The best play relative to other players can be Kasparov and the best overall play according to engines and computers is Magnus Carlsen. So I hope this has been thought provoking and I bet that you had not heard of this before and not seen this arguments made before. If you like the video, please subscribe.